What is going on YouTube? This is Jim and his lovely wife Rachel. How you doing Rachel? Great Jim. We are going to tell you a tale of two Xbox Ones. A um, tale of two Xbox events. We already went, we already we already know the, the long song and dance about the single fan fest ticket. I ended up going, you went to the Microsoft store. I went to the Microsoft store in Los Angeles. Right. Um, for my very own Xbox event. All right, so do you, I guess I'll start and then we'll interject with your part as yes. we go through the pictures. There's a lot of pictures here. I took as many pictures as I could. FanFest was broken down into a couple events, three events actually, two of which took place during the same day. When we showed up at this, um, I don't remember the name of the venue we showed up at. Uh, Casa. Casa something. We'll get to it in the pictures. The, it was laid out in such a way that um, you had your badges on one side. You could get your shirt uh, embroidered over on one side. They had food boxes. They had the wall of Crackdown Donuts. There wasn't really much to it. And as I was standing there, that was kind of just a holding tank to get everybody registered, check in your bags. No loot was given out at this time. Um, and we got some lunch, and we stood there and listened to uh, Chris Money Rumble, who's the kind of coordinator of this event, walk us through kind of what the itinerary was. So a lot of the pictures you're seeing are just me kind of looking around, um, taking some taking some still photos or some movies of just kind of like the perimeter wasn't much going on and I, I was thinking to myself like i mean it was cool that i got in the door like this was an exclusive thing but i was thinking to myself like this kind of sucks like there's not much going on here you know but they gave you a bunch of wristbands or like it's going to be important later we knew that was the loot bag all that kind of stuff um i did see a little teaser at one point they had a sign that said customize your shirt and your hat and i'm like i didn't get a hat i'm like oh, i'm getting a hat i'm getting a hat so I knew I was going to get something. Um, so we went outside. They had these giant buses. Oh, the name of the, ho the, name of the place was called Casa Vertigo, which was inside, thankfully. But not much going on there. And I was like, uh, okay. Now he did say before we got on the bus, he being uh, Chris Money Rumble, he said, listen, when you come back, this area will be transformed slightly. So I'm like, okay, like, you know, what are you going to do? Put out some like beanbag chairs? Like this kind of blows, like whatever. So... Um, we got, we took the bus and we went over to the, uh, event. Now I think, um, at this time you were going through your fan fest event cause they were about, cause you got there cause now to jump over for a second, I'm getting ready to see the press conference. So what, what are you, you're at the mall at this point. So what I are you to seeing? The, to the Microsoft store. Um, so we, one of the malls, wherever the mall was, right? Yes, we uh, went, we got in line. Uh -huh. They were going to do a Forza tournament, so I got registered to do that. Okay, so they say they announced they were going to do a Forza, like a Forza 6 tournament. Yes. And the winner gets what? Cookies? The winner, and the winner gets an Xbox One S. Whoa, that's actually a big deal. And the runner-up got a um, Shadow Blue controller. Nice. So that's actually uh, so, three consoles. Pretty sweet. So again, that's pretty cool. So um, you'll see some pictures of the stations that we got to race on. Um, unfortunately, mm -hmm. what I didn't like about this event is that they did the contest during the press conference. So we started watching the press conference. So they had the speakers like piped through the yes the event. So you could hear like, hey, I'm Phil Spencer, blah, blah, blah. Yep. And then when they got into the tournament, they turned down... Uh, the press conference and then everybody's kind of watching people play so i didn't really get to see all of the press conference as it was going on because then the tournament started um so you really even as of right now this recording uh uh you have not yet seen the official xbox press conference. i have not seen the entirety of the xbox just just the first conference. like 15 minutes or I, I think we saw about the first hour okay. and then um well, that was the good stuff. So you and saw then, the Scorpio. I saw the Scorpio. Okay. And then we had a special guest come. So I'll turn it over to Jim and let him talk about the press conference. But understand that about halfway through the press conference... You were out. <laughs> we, um, we had a special surprise happen that I'll tell you about. So while Rachel was um, watching people beat her at Forza... <laughs> Uh, they ushered us into the Galen Center, and I'm not familiar with the Galen Center other than I know they play basketball there, or some team plays basketball there. USC. We stood inside. The first pictures you're seeing, you're seeing pictures of Aaron Greenberg and Major Nelson. 
they set up all these folding chairs in, in a basketball court. So on each side was like bleachers and the hoops and all that kind of stuff. And while we're filing in, they give us wristbands. I was yellow, which meant go with the yellow group. This is where um, I met some really cool people. I met this guy, Corey, and I met this guy, um, Kevin. Really nice guys. And, um, got, you know, talking with them, they're really, really cool dudes. So we're Xbox Live IRL friends now, which is awesome. Um, anyways, I was sitting next to those guys talking. So Major Nelson comes out and kind of hypes up the crowd. Welcome to fan. Now, people are still filing in, you know. I mean, we're all just cattle call here, 500 of us. Um, Aaron Greenberg's getting hyped up. They they come out and they were talking about the chip, and they showed us the chip. They showed they gave us another little badge, like a clear kind of transparent badge. Um, all the major like who's who of Microsoft started coming out. I'm not sure who all these people are, honestly. The lead designer comes out and he has a chip. Um, probably the best one was uh, Phil Spencer. So I got about a 30 second video. I'm gonna play for you guys. Of Phil Spencer talking, and um, that was this is like his pre-hype message. This is before he goes on stage, so we're gonna play that real quick so you guys can hear that. This is an incredible thing. Uh, I tweeted out some this morning, <laughs> but I, I really want you to know this: like that having you on the floor, having you cheering, you are part of the team. You're part of what makes this show great. Your enthusiasm, your feedback, is just so much of what drives Team Xbox makes all of this possible. So you are just what makes Xbox so special. So thank you for me to the team. Thank you for everything that you do. It's fantastic. So after he does his little hype up message and he's talking to everybody, um, we get ushered into the stage. It was so cool to see the stage. Um, to be included in that, I got some video you'll see of me like walking down. Like I felt like graduation, you know, like you see the audio equipment, there's guys holding flags, go left, go right. We were supposed to be, the Xbox fan festers, were supposed to be front row and center. The folding chairs in the front were supposed to be, for us, the best seats in the house. That didn't happen because either, not, not either, I know why, because press and their family and like Phil Spencer's kids and all these other people started filling in these seats very rapidly. So they pushed us off to the side on like the left hand side of the stage, I guess stage right. I don't know. I don't know my direction. But for me to look at the stage, I had to turn my head to the right, whatever you call that. So some pictures of me sitting there. Um, and I noticed, too, the stage didn't entirely fill, like the, the, it didn't entirely fill up. There's a lot of empty seats on the upper bowl. and I don't know why. So from what I understand, if you were out there and you waited in line, they let everybody in okay. at the press conference. Well, that might have been the case, but it wasn't entirely full. Um, funny picture, you're going to see a picture at some point of a black TV monitor with the number 20 in parentheses. That was the teleprompter. And Phil Spencer reads so slow. We were reading, like, announcements before he was saying them, which was really kind of funny. So um, I think that leads us into the big Scorpio reveal. And I won't, we, won't, we can talk about our thoughts on Scorpio and stuff later, but... Right around that time is when you actually got to do what? So we got a special surprise at the Microsoft store in Los Angeles. Ahmad Green, the retired Green Bay Packer, brought in an Xbox One X and we all went nuts. And you got to hold it. We got to hold it, we got to touch it, we got to take selfies, we got to take pictures. Um, so I was one of the first people to touch and hold an Xbox One S. So you'll see a bunch of pictures. Right, there's a bunch of you, uh, him like profiling it, and then you actually, I could tell you're struggling to hold it because I just see like your nose it's, and you're like a little bit of your forehead. It's extremely heavy. Yeah, well with the water cooling system and, it, the, it and is, I'm assuming is, internal power supply. It, it's extremely heavy. I don't know whether or not it has an external power supply. Um, as you can see, they later plugged it in Right, and you but, tried to be stealthy and take a picture of the side, I, but you couldn't tell. I, I couldn't tell um, because I wanted to get a picture for everybody of what the power supply would actually look like. Right. Um, unfortunately, it's plugged in in a giant box. So something they didn't tell us during the press conference, but you found out, was that the back, the back is identical. Yes, the so back this, is it's identical. So it's got the HDMI pass-through. Everything is exactly the same by design. 
So again, you'll see those pictures. Right. Um, that was cool. That was that, cool. We got to that see. That was it. cool that we got. Yeah. We got a little something extra. A little bonus. A little something something. However, right. I was a little disappointed that they did it in the middle of the press conference as opposed to waiting. So right after he announced it, like Ahmad Green's like, here it is, like right. It was slightly like after... was it in tandem as Phil announces the price? He comes running out and he's holding it. I, I think it was pretty close. That's I wonder if it's like time that way. But you still but this the press conference is still pretty much silent. Press conference is still going on pretty much silent. That's then funny. we got the race going on and right. they're calling the races and So you didn't get to see like an in depth like not, uh, not at all. That's funny. So anyway, so while you were doing that, um, back to press conference land, the announcement was kinda of flat. And everybody kind of checked out after the Scorpio release. <laughs> um, or Xbox One X. And I can kind of see why. So when we were done with the press conference, we got to take some photos. And then we took the bus back. So they shuttled all the buses back. Back to that same castle, whatever. So meanwhile, we're still playing the Forza tournament. Right. So we're, the press conference is over. So you're, after, so you're playing after the tournaments or the conference is over. Yes. We're, we're already we're done with that. We're already, and they shuttled us out very rapidly. Like within five minutes, we were back on a bus. Um, we get back and now outside of that place is a Taco Bell food truck and some Korean barbecue food truck Ooh. and people start lining up. I run inside cause I want to see like, am I getting my backpack? Whatever. Because, uh, not to jump ahead, but I wanted to get out of there so that I could get to Bethesda land, which we'll talk about in another video, but that was back to back with this. Overlapping actually. Right. So I wanted to get out. I'm like, okay, let's get my bag and get out of here. So me, Corey, Kevin, we're already like, let's call a lift and let's get the hell out of here. But no bags yet. But it actually worked out okay because when we got back, they did do a good job of converting it. So um, they replaced what previously was the lunchbox station with a bunch of couches. And they had retro games. They had like Halo 2, Halo 3, Gears, all these tournaments. They had a lot of cosplayers dressed up like Spartans. And um, they had – you could now get a hat upstairs. You can get your shirt your hat was the choice of two logos. That was your customized hat. I'm, um, I'm pretty sure that you will all agree with me when you see your hat our is hats. Way better. That my hat is way cooler. <laughs> way better. Way better. Um, so they had all these different stations set up. They also had um, an open bar, which as comes to find out, this is very standard in these Hollywood parties. But I'm like, wait, free tacos, which Dorito tacos, nacho cheese, not the crappy Cool Ranch, the good stuff. All you can eat tacos, all you can eat Korean barbecue, open bar, anything you want. You want Coke, you want Jack and Coke, you want Jack, you want wine, you want beer. Now, did they have top shelf liquor? I don't or? know. I didn't get any. I don't know. They had beer taps, they had everything. They were just, it was great. And it was, a lot of people were over there hitting the stuff. I was walking around. Um, there wasn't a ton to take in after the initial, like, what's going on? But thankfully, um, they had some DJ, I don't know who he was. Um, they were hyping up SoundCloud, because that's now integrated into the Xbox One. Um, he was up there spinning records and they were good. They were good songs. It wasn't overly bassy. It was loud. It was very loud in there, but that's okay. It um, wasn't overly bassy. A lot of good dance songs. No one was dancing though, but you know, a lot of like that, like electronic kind of stuff that I like. Um, and then they started bringing out special guests and that's when I got really excited. So I can't remember the dude's name for the life of me, but the designer of Tekken 7, he comes out on stage, talks about the game and then they did a tournament right there. They oh, just cool. randomly called fans, come up and play. Um, didn't announce what the prize was as we found out later it was nothing nothing unique for playing the tur tournament other than for everyone else's entertainment um, hey so, you, you gotta make you gotta get so the jokes where you can for the last couple of, like during this time I basically went in the back of the bar there's a picture you'll see of like way in the back and I just hung out there I just kind of leaned up against the bar I got on my phone I started texting people what's going on I'm kind of bored here how's Bethesda land I wanted to go but no loot yet still no loot um they had the Spartan guys, they, after about half an hour of walking around in their power armor, they got tired. They're taking their helmets off. They were playing games. They were eating tacos. Um, Major Nelson comes out and shows us his Xbox. We weren't allowed to touch it, uh, which was kind of funny because you guys were. Like, they guarded this. Like, there was like security guards everywhere. And by the way, all these events, even E3, like these private security dudes all in suits. It was like CIA, like Secret Service stuff. It was very weird. Um... So he comes out like all these guards around him and he's like, oh, I've got the Xbox One S and he's holding it up for people to see, but you can't touch it. So it's kind of weird. Um, so, sucks to be a fan fest if you just went to the Microsoft store. Yeah, right. Exactly. We don't even get to <laughs> touch it and you're like holding it. Anyways, um, 
by far the coolest moment of entire E3 was day one for, well, actually day two for me. I got to meet Bravo, which is a freaking huge deal to me. Don't laugh. Why are you laughing? Rachel's laughing at me. I love it. I'm, show, I'm looking at the picture. Look, look in my eyes as we look in his eyes. I see. You are, you I are was absolutely stoked. smitten to meet Bravo. Andy is such a cool dude. Um, Halo 5, previous community manager. Now he's a, like a director on Halo 6. Um, really cool guy. I had a, like a 10-minute conversation with him about first time going E3 and Halo and all the cool stuff he did. Super cool. And then I realized, to me, that was really what FanFest was. I mean, you know, again, jumping ahead, comparing it to other things, it wasn't that great of like a party. Like, there wasn't a whole lot going on. Yeah, you got food, you got drinks, there was a couple games. I don't know what I expected, but when they make it so hard to get in, right, I was hoping for more like, over the top like and now everyone gets a new car and here's the president and here you know what i mean like one thing after another and it wasn't that but the fan fest really was just a safe place for fans to hang out do stupid drunk things together and meet meet and greet with different people so bravo came out which made my event sketch who's the current halo community manager came out i don't remember the tech and dude's name then the Gears Viking himself, Rod Ferguson, he comes out later. I didn't get a picture with him. Major Nelson was out there. Phil Spencer was out there. So all these people are coming to meet, you know, we wait in line, meet the fans. But after about an hour or so, I was like, okay, I'm kind of done. Like, it wasn't a lot to, there wasn't enough to like keep me going. Yeah, I went up, I got my shirt, I got my hat, I ate tacos, I had a Coke. I'm done. I'm bored. I want like, what's next, you know? So at this point, I'm probably standing in line waiting to get into the next event okay yeah so you jumped on to bethesda land and i'm still here uh kind of trapped um then towards the end um uh what else did they do well that was pretty much honestly really the end i mean after bravo came out it was kind of quiet we we're trying to figure out how to get a car and get out of here they announced our swag bags I'll, I'll post a picture of that really nice headphones external hard drive backpack full of hats shirts land just tons and tons of stuff more that was the biggest haul of like high quality loot i think yep definitely um, got a lot of a lot of good stuff and it was cool that they did that i didn't expect anything of that kind. a lot of people thought we were getting free xboxes i'm like i don't think so supposedly they did in the past i didn't think we were maybe i was thinking like a controller or something i didn't know what to expect but um free year of xbox live uh free year of the game pass um the Xbox Ambassadors. Xbox Ambassadors. All these great things. And it was just like, here's a loot dump at the end. And But, you know, honestly, like, when it was done from day one, I was like, man. So I'm going to jump ahead to day two so I don't have to do a separate video on this. Day two was way better. Now, day two, you didn't have anything going on. Um, this was now following... Day two, we had just finished the PlayStation Experience. That's right. That's and, right. And... Uh, I you, dropped Jim off at the Galen Center. Back at the Galen Center again. And I went to the hotel and took a nap. So they, so day two was way better. They converted everything into uh, where the where those stage seats were, where those like fold out chairs for like the best you, seats. You mean, you mean on the Xbox press conference? Yeah, they pulled all those chairs out. So they replaced it with well, first of all, there's like a bunch of pirates singing from Sea of Thieves. So you walk inside, they have all these glass exhibits of all these, like, you know, here's all the Gears collectibles, here's all the Halo collectibles, here's Crackdown, whatever. They had a big fort. So we, and a lot of this stuff, by the way, ultimately made it to the Xbox booth yep. for the real E3. But everything that was here, um, I got to do kind of before. They had an open bar again in the center, a bunch of hors d'oeuvres, people walking around with, like, little grilled cheeses and little taquitos and cookies and peanuts and stuff. They dropped all these giant banners down. And people were walking around, and this was the true game day. They had the, they had the press conference running on continuous loop in the background. They had another famous DJ, some girl, I don't know her name. Um, open bar in the center, and all the games you could play. So this definitely kept me occupied. So I played Sea of Thieves twice. I played Assassin's Creed twice. I played um, the little Super Lucky's furball thing. But this was definitely a lot more fun. This was like, to me, Fan Fest should have been this on the first day. But it wasn't. I don't know why they, like, couldn't have done this on day one. So it was basically the entire E3 Xbox booth. Pretty much. For you guys Pretty to play. Much. Pretty much. Without waiting in the giant lines. Um, my big takeaway from this, you'll see a bunch of pictures. I got a really cool, like, lucky shot of me on stage, or right in front of the stage, with Master Chief in the background. Although he didn't make an official conference presence, he was there, you know, in the trailer. 
Got to look at the Xbox development kits. Got to see like a blowout of the Xbox One. All these cool banners, posters. The big, the big thing for me with that was my one-sided conversation with the lead. I don't know this dude's name. He was the, he's the lead quality control manager for Ubisoft. And I just chewed his ass out. I know Brent is listening right now cheering because I told him of all the bugs, the floating Apple crap, the faceless bug, how bad Unity was, the pop-ins. And I was pointing things out on Scorpio to him. It's the most powerful console in the world. I'm like, why is there pop in here? Why is there this? Why is there that? And I wasn't mean to him by any means. He's a very nice guy. He really confirmed to me that Ubisoft, like, he has no control over it. Even though he's the quality manager, at the end of the day, he's just another cog in the wheel. So as a former quality person myself, <laughs> right. I, I fully understand his pain and I, I get where he's coming from. Um, unfortunately, when you announce yourself as a quality control manager, right. people immediately want to tell you how bad your quality is. Yes, and, and what you can do to make it better. So right. he'd have been better off to not announce himself as a quality manager and to just say he was a Ubisoft developer. He worked in the development right. process. So, but he was nice. I mean, I wasn't disrespectful to him by any means, but I just told him like, you know, like I'm not happy with this. So that was, it was cool though, because the people that were running the demos, which we did ultimately go on to find as we went into the E3 proper, the people that were there were not just like hired hands that didn't know what they were doing. They were developers, they were senior people on the game, they were programmers, they were artists, and they were genuinely looking to get feedback and, and on I their think, games. I and think, I like that a lot. I think it's cool that the Xbox Fan Fest experience allowed people to have that interaction with the developers, the producers, right. the the designers. Right, because you're not going to get that at E3. You know, you know, you're not going to get that even, time. Even the quality people, you're not going to get that time. You're not going to be able to give that input. Um, it was only on some of the, what I would call, lesser known games right. at E3 where you got to make those connections as a non-industry Correct. or non-press so person. That was a cool part of the Fan Fest. The other thing was during the game demos at this fan fest there wasn't a timer so the guy would just stand there and kind of look at his watch and like we were playing sea of thieves and we were we played we played probably for close to an hour straight just we did a bunch of levels and you know and he was the they have a guy on comms who's like one of the game designers kind of walking us through it but we were having so much fun he didn't interrupt us there were people waiting in line to play you'll get to play later you you know and the lines move fast enough. I know it sounds like we hogged the machine. Maybe we did a little bit. Who cares? But it's my fan fest too. God damn it. But I'll tell you though that uh, there was no timer. Like after I got done playing Unity or uh, Unity um, uh, Origins, I stood up and I continued to talk with that Ubisoft guy. He was still talking to me while other people were playing. I jumped back on again and played more. So a lot more accessibility. So for a fan out there who is a true Xbox diehard, this is a must have if you know the personalities and if you are good at engaging with other people. If you're looking to go and be entertained, you're not gonna get it during day one. You'll get some of it during day two, assuming they replicate this for future years. Um, but all in all, it was a cool experience. I'm glad I got to go, but does not pale in any comparison at all to Bethesda. And I'm jumping ahead of myself, but I'll stop it here. Uh, any closing thoughts on Xbox from your perspective? I think that if we had both gotten to go, I think you would have had a lot better time. I think so too. Um, and also, it's unfortunate that that event overlaps with other events. Right. Um, you know, as, as a fan of video games, right. not just one particular console or one particular um, company, right. it makes it very, very difficult to divide your time and figure out what you want to do. Now, they were cool about it during the first day of the loot when they said, okay, we're going to give your loot bags now. You could stay till eight, but you can get your loot bag right now because I know a lot of you guys want to go to Bethesda. So I think they're cognizant of that. Um, but I will say that um, as far as like what I thought it was going to be, it was not. I'm not saying it was a disappointment. I had my moment with Bravo, which was amazing, and it wouldn't have happened otherwise. I'm 100% sure of that. So to have that one-on-one -on -one just for the five, 10 minutes with him was awesome to me. 
I don't know if the layman who's going to go there is going to say, oh, look, it's who are you, Rod Ferguson? Oh, I played Gears once. Yeah, okay. I don't think they realize how monumental he is to Gears, how, how monumental Bravo is to Halo, or that Tekken dude is to Tekken. Like, well, you lose a lot of that, you know? And not only that, but the experience is what you make of it. Right. You have to make your own experience at the Xbox Fan Fest right. event. It's not going to make it for you. I agree 100%. So, Unlike some other events. Well, we'll get into those in due time, dear. As always, want to thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the layman's review of the Xbox Fan Fest and the... Ahmad Green Xbox holding ceremony. Thank you so for, thank you so much for watching. Get out there. Don't pre-order the Scorpio. And until next time, we will see you guys on the other side.